here we go. The last page of our lens computation power packet, determining compensated vertex power. Again, a new concept, um, but we're gonna be using um, some pretty basic ideas uh, to help us understand uh, what happens. So first I'd like to have a slightly broader conversation about vertex power and what happens when we change the vertex of a lens. So let's start with just kind of a brief discussion about what vertex is. So we've got our patient's eye, I know lovely picture, um, and then we have our patient's uh, glasses sitting in front of them. This space between the front of the cornea and the back of the lens is called the vertex. In compensated vertex power, we're discussing changing by either moving the lens closer to the eye or further away, uh, changing the power based on that movement. Because when we move a lens, something happens. If we are dealing with a plus lens and we move that plus lens further away from the patient, it actually increases the power of that lens. So the image looks bigger. If we're dealing with a plus lens and we decrease the vertex or move the glasses closer to the patient, uh, the patient would actually see a smaller image. Opposite is true for a minus. If I have a minus lens and I move that minus lens further away from our patient, it actually gets <clears throat> uh, weaker. So we would see a slightly smaller image. I'm sorry, a bigger image. So minus weaker uh, gets bigger. A minus lens that's moved closer actually gets stronger, so um, our original sign would actually look uh, smaller in this case because pluses magnify as they get stronger and um, <clears throat> our minus lenses uh, minify or make things look smaller um, as they uh, get stronger. So understanding what happens as we move the lens um, away from the patient or closer to them is very important to understanding uh, compensated vertex power. So let's jump into the actual equation. So let's get rid of our diagram here and uh, throw some numbers at this idea. So we're going to start with our practice exercise number one. Uh, we are dealing in this particular case with a patient who has a power of minus 14. This, this particular prescription uh, is really important um, and we don't really talk about vertex compensation until our patient has a prescription of about seven and a half or higher. Uh, so 14 definitely is a prescription that we need to um, address potential change in power. So we have our minus 14. Uh, the refracting vertex is where the doctor actually did the exam or where the phoropter sat in reference to the patient's face. And in this particular scenario, they're telling us that the phoropter sat 14 millimeters from the patient's eye. But the glasses were fit at 10 millimeters. So the glasses actually sat closer to the patient than the uh, refraction was done at, so or where the phoropter sat. Now, this is important. Uh, we're dealing with a minus lens, and we know that minuses that are fit closer to the patient actually get stronger. So we're actually gonna need to take away some of that minus 
in order to compensate for the fact that the glasses are sitting closer to our patient. So once we figure out the amount of difference or the amount of compensation needed, we're gonna to have to take that away from our original prescription of minus 14. Now the equation that we use says that we take the power and we square it, which basically means that we're just gonna take 14 times itself, or 14 times 14. When we do that, we end up with 196. So 14 times 14 equals 196. Next step of the equation is to, to divide that number by 1,000. And when we do that, we end up with 0.196. All we're doing is moving the decimal um, three spots to the left. So right now, one, two, three, one, two, three, so 0.96. So that's how uh, dividing any number by a thousand is gonna change what we're looking at here. So we've got a number of 0.196. We then take that number and multiply it by the difference between how the glasses were refracted or made and then how they sit on our patient. So 0.196 times four is gonna tell us how much change that we're going to need to make. Now, we end up with a number though that looks like 7.784. Now that doesn't look really like a prescription uh, that we are used to dealing with. Uh, maybe in a digital lens, um, however, um, not the way that prescriptions are written. So we need to think about what is the closest normal prescription to a 0.784. And we would say that a 0.75 or a 0.75 diopter lens is uh, the closest to this 0.784. We're doing a little bit of rounding. So we're rounding to the closest um, eighth of a power. So we're looking at 0.75. This is how much change needs to make, be made to our minus 14 lens. And we learned that because our lens sat closer to the patient and it increased uh, the power of that minus, that we were gonna have to take some of that minus away. And this is the amount of minus that we need to take away. We're gonna take that away from the uh, original prescription, that minus 14. So if we said minus 14, uh, minus uh, that 0.75, we gotta take, cause remember we're taking some of that away, so we need to make the prescription weaker, we would end up with a minus 13.25. So we're taking 0.75 diopters of minus away, meaning that we are now going to have to order a lens that reads minus 13.25 to make up for the fact that these glasses sit closer to our patient. So let's go ahead and do another one. So let's get rid of this and let's try another one. Let's do example number two. This time we're dealing with a plus 13. And our patient was refracted at 10, but the glasses actually sit at 15. So they're sitting five millimeters further away from our patient. Based on what we learned earlier, we learned that if a plus lens sits further away from our patient, that it actually increases in strength. 
So we're gonna have to take away some of that plus power in order to compensate or make up for the fact that the glasses sat five millimeters further away from our patient. Now we're gonna plug our prescription into the equation. So 13 squared or 13 times itself equals 169. We're then gonna divide that 169 by 1,000, giving us a 0.169. We take that 0.169 and we multiply that by the difference the fitting vertex was from the refracting vertex. So when we do our point 169 times 5, we should get 0.845. Now again, not a prescription that we're used to seeing, and we need to work in eighths of a power. Now the closest eighth of a power is 0.87. So we're going to change this prescription by 0.87. And because of the fact that our patient's lens got stronger, right, bigger plus means that it got stronger, we need to take some of that plus 13 away. So we're going to take 0.87 away from our plus 13. When we do that, we should end up with a plus 12.12. So when we order this particular patient's lenses, we would actually order for them a plus one or 12.12 instead of the originally prescribed 13 because these glasses sit further away from our patient. Again, the most important part of this conversation isn't necessarily this answer at the end, but more what happens when we move a pair of glasses. Understanding that pluses moved away get stronger and minuses moved away get weaker, and then the opposite for when we move glasses closer to our patient is the more important concept. Yes, we can do the math and yes, we can figure it out. Um, however, understanding what happens to a lens uh, when it's moved is most important. Hope you enjoyed the instruction. Again, if you have any questions, give me a call and I can't wait to talk to you guys soon. Thanks, bye.